In this video, we're going to cover uh, making all the electrical connections on the machine. That includes both uh, hooking up the stepper motors, making the spindle motor connections, and also uh, wiring, uh, in this case, our control kit. So this machine, we installed the touchscreen and the uh, mini PC add-on. This, this option is available on our website. If you don't have this option uh, installed, you're going to either need a uh, laptop computer or a desktop to be able to run the machine. Uh, you're going to need that now uh, to be able to uh, get all these connections made because the next steps after this video, we're going to be installing the limit switches, which requires us to be able to jog the machine. And then after that, we're going to be doing, um, you know, break in program, doing our cable management, things like that. So now's the time to, to get your uh, computer set up. Um, with that being said, I'm going to go over the uh, pieces uh, that come in the kit. This is the uh, 220 volt power cable for the spindle. Um, you're going to need a, uh, you obviously need it. You're going to need a, a 220 to 240 volt outlet to plug this in. This is uh, the power cable for the machine. Um, this is a 100, 110 volt outlet. Uh, USB cable. Uh, make sure that your USB cable is the correct one, and you'll know that it has um, two ferret chokes. Very important. And then these options or these items here go to the control kit or they come with the control kit. Um, this is the uh, power adapter for the mini PC. Um, this is the power adapter for the touch screen. Uh, both of them are 120 volts. The USB isolator. Um, we supply this with all of our control kits. If you have a desktop or a laptop at home, you likely uh, won't need this. Um, so don't worry about this if you don't have one of these. Uh, you have a USB cable um, that connects from the uh, touchscreen to the mini PC, and then also um, HDMI cable to go from the mini PC to the touchscreen. Make sure you don't forget this USB cable because this is what allows you to have the touch functionality on the screen. Um, and you'll also note that this doesn't have ferrite chokes, so don't accidentally uh, use this in place of the uh, machine communication USB cable, which has uh, ferrite chokes. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get started on uh, routing the stepper motor cables. Want to make sure that we get all the connections correct. We don't want to plug in uh, the wrong motor to the wrong port. So I'm going to go over which each one of these cables are and what port they plug into. We're not going to be doing the cable management at this point. We're basically going to be laying these or draping these cables over the back of the machine to plug into the uh, electronics enclosure. In a later video, um, basically once we've got the limit switches on there, that's when we can go ahead and start uh, tying off our cables, you know, zip tying our control kit cables to the, uh, to the uh, stand for the touchscreen, you know, tying off to the cable support tube. Um, draping everything nice so that we can jog in X, Y, and Z full travel and not have any um, cable issues. So that being said, I'm going to start with the X-axis stepper motor cable. Just going to undo this zip tie. I'm going to drape it over the back. And that gets plugged into this port that says X-axis. So there's a, there's a key or a key way on the plug and that matches up to a key on the port. You'll need those lined up for them to go in and then secure it with the knurled thumb nut. Next, I'm going to do the Y1 motor. If you're facing the front of the machine, the Y1 motor is the motor on the left hand side. And you'll want to make sure that you don't accidentally plug the Y1 motor into the Y2 motor inadvertently because that will affect how the limit switches work and more importantly, how the auto squaring functionality works. So the Y1 axis is right here. I'm gonna plug that in here. Next, I'll go over to Y2, which is the other Y motor on the other side of the machine. Here's Y2. And then I'm going to do the Z axis motor. Go 
which is here. And then I'm going to do the spindle motor uh, connection. So you'll notice coming out of the top of the spindle motor or through the, through the uh, pass-through hole on the um, Z or the spindle cover, there's two cables. The cable with the gray connector is the encoder cable. This is a servo motor, so it uses an encoder. And then the black connection is the uh, power cable. So those get plugged in down here. And this one is also a keyed connection. So you kind of got to rotate it to find out where the keys line up. There we go. And secure it with the thumb nut. And then the next is the, um, the DB connector and that goes into the spindle encoder port. So you'll notice that this includes two Phillips head screws. We're gonna wanna tighten those. You'll need a number one Phillips head screwdriver to install those. Next, we're gonna do the uh, machine power input cable and the spindle drive input cable. So I'm gonna grab those off the machine now. plugs in here and the motor power cable plugs in right here. Now I'm going to jump back up to the uh, control kit and we'll cover how you make those connections on the control kit itself. So I'm going to start with um, the HDMI cable. I believe the port's on the bottom. Yeah. And that goes to the HDMI port on the touch screen, which is here. Then I'll take the USB cable. Plug it into the one of two available USB ports. Like that. Then the mini PC power cable. Plugs in here down to a 120 volt outlet. Just gonna hang it down here for now. And then the power cable for the touch screen. And the last thing we need to do is hook up the USB isolator and the uh, USB cable. So this goes from the uh, mini PC to the electronics enclosure. There's a USB port on the front of the electronics enclosure. We're gonna make that connection. Actually this needs to, you're gonna wanna put the USB isolator in the top slot, or sorry, I should say the bottom slot.
and I'll hook up my USB cable. And the other end hooks up to the electronics enclosure, the port on the front. And as I said before, we're not going to worry about the um, cable routing at this point. We're going to cover that in another video. We're just trying to get all the connections made. And then the last thing that's in the kit is this, um, the jog pendant. We saw this with all of the um, control kits. This is just really handy for um, when you're inside the machine, you want to jog around, you want to pause, um, you know, shift between different jog, um, jog uh, types, really useful for that. We also sell this as a standalone option. So if you want one of these, you can buy it directly off our website and use it with your um, USB cable, uh, or sorry, your uh, desktop or a laptop. Now there's a dongle inside of this. So we're gonna wanna hook that up here. So the dongle comes inside of your, um, the back of the keyboard, you gotta just take the cover off, pull the dongle out, we'll put the cover back on. And then there's a, another USB port that we're gonna hook up or put this in, goes right on the bottom. And that's all the connections. So in the next video, we're going to cover um, basically, oh, I need to mention that you need to do a specific setup on the MC4000, the control kit. So there's instructions on our website that cover basically how to power this on, um, how to configure it for running on the machine, uh, how to download the latest version of cut control. So you're going to want to go and do that now, follow the instructions on our, on our website. And if you have a laptop or a desktop, you're going to want to go and download Cut Control um, so that for the next video, we can basically get this thing powered up, start jogging it around uh, in preparation for doing our limit switch installation. That's it for this video.